So today's workshop, getting to know the Naviance College and Career Readiness Platform. And we have Kathy here from the School District of Philadelphia's Office of Post-Secondary Readiness. And she's going to be talking a little bit about the platform. And I also have Nicole here from PowerSchool. They're both going to be talking to you about Naviance and how it could help with career and college readiness for students. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to them. Thank you so much. Good morning and thank you, Eric, for the introduction. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen. And if you can uh, see my screen, if you could just give me a thumbs up. Awesome. Um, so let me just put this in slideshow mode. Um, so again, my name is Kathy White. I am Director of Special Projects in the Office of Post-Secondary Readiness. And I'm joined uh, by Nicole Becker from PowerSchool. And PowerSchool is actually the company that powers Naviance. Um, just to go over a few objectives of this session, um, once you leave this session, I hope that you all understand what Naviance is. Um, it is the college and career readiness platform that we use with our students in grades three through 12. Um, you understand how your student uses it um, and how your student actually accesses the platform. Nicole is going to be doing a demo for us. And lastly, recognize how the platform can be a tool to help students really align their strengths and interests with careers that they might want to pursue in the future. Um, so we'll first talk about what is Naviance? What is the college and career readiness platform? How your student uses it in the classroom? Uh, how they can use it at home even? And uh, the activities that we have, so the future ready PA scope and sequence activities we have for students, how parents and guardians can use the platform. And then finally, as I said, I will turn it over to Nicole, who will be going into the platform and doing a demo so that you all can see exactly what your student sees, when they go into this college and career at um, college and career platform and some of the activities that they are able to do inside of Naviance. So basically, this is our college and career readiness platform. As I said, we are using this platform with our students in grades three through 12, and it helps to uh, students to really connect what they're strong at, what they're interested in, and aligning that with their post-secondary goals. So once they graduate high school, um, students are using this beginning in grade three, and they're actually really creating a portfolio in the platform. So a student can always go back and see, and you know, say they're in 10th grade, they can go back and see, hey, what did I say I wanted to do when I grew up, when I was in third grade? So it is a continuum um, and this is something that follows them no matter what school they are in, as long as they're in the school district of Philadelphia. Um, we wanna make sure that you all know that it is a secure web-based um, uh, solution and that all of your students' information is private and housed in this web-based solution. Uh, there are also assessments, which Nicole will talk about. And again, those assessments really help students align their strengths and interests with careers they might be interested in pursuing. Um, we find that many times students will just say like, hey, I want to be a doctor, right? Because they know a doctor makes a lot of money and they're not really thinking about what are some things that I like to do? What are things that interest me and what are careers out there? Um, that would allow me to exercise those strengths and interests in the future. Um, the other thing that the platform does is it manages uh, students' entire uh, college and career planning process. So um, particularly if students are interested in uh, going on after high school to post-secondary uh, institutions, the platform handles all the applications, transcripts, teacher recommendations, all of that is housed right inside of this uh, college and career readiness solution. Lastly, students can explore careers. They can take a look at uh, admission criteria. They can review uh, criteria for admissions to post-secondary in institutions, which would include our colleges, universities and technical schools. 
So how do we use this with students in the district? Um, the first and most important thing is we use it for our students to create their PA future ready career portfolio. And if you're not uh, familiar with P future ready PA, uh, this is just a state mandate that says that all schools in the state of Pennsylvania must show evidence that we are doing activities and tasks with students inside of our classrooms that prepare them for college and career. And we also are utilizing this um, to work on the career education and work standards. These are standards that were created um, by the P Pennsylvania Department of Education, and they are created to basically complement our regular academic standards. So while students are learning things in the classroom, how do those things align to post-secondary readiness or college and career? Um, just to give an example, if I am a fourth grader and I'm learning about fractions in the classroom, we might make a connection to, let's say, one of the career education and work standards is entrepreneurship. So making sure that students aren't just understanding fractions, but how do fractions translate when I'm, say, uh, creating a recipe? How do I use fractions to break down that recipe? And then to take it a step even further, if I was a student and I wanted to own a business and say I was an entrepreneur, how do fractions come into play uh, in my career? Uh, we also use Navian student for career planning. Um, so helping students to really think about which careers they want to do and to really create a process and plan for that particular career. College planning, as I mentioned earlier, students are able to explore different colleges, universities, technical schools right inside of the platform, and they're able to look at the criteria and begin to plan. And then success planning. Students are able to set goals. They're able to create resumes. Um, so they're able to keep journals. So they're able to do all of these things right in this comprehensive college and career readiness platform. I just wanted to show you an example of one of the tasks or what tasks look like in our scope and sequence for our students. So this is a task that we would have in our English class. So our students in third grade are talking about time management and, and specifically in this unit in their curriculum, they're talking a lot about how do you manage screen time? So being on your iPad or your iPhone or computer or that kind of thing. And how do I use that to manage my time? So once a student is um, finished this particular unit, they would go in and they would complete an activity in Naviance. This one is a time management worksheet. So if I clicked on here, it would force me to make a copy of the document. And then our third grade students would be looking at time management. So what are the top three things you should make time for each day? Getting them to start to think about how they manage their time. Um, there are some examples and they can uh, go in and really think about how much screen time they think they should have every day. Then they go into the Naviance platform and they will answer some survey questions based off of what they learned about screen time. There's also uh, links here, um, this particular link uh, will link to um, information that they will do with their students. I mean, the teachers will be completing with their students that have to do with uh, screen time. So making sure that our students in as young as third grade are really thinking about things that they will need to think about um, once they are out of school and they're in their career. And one of those things is time management. So the last thing I am going to actually show you before I turn it over to uh, Nicole is that for parents and guardians, 
who have actually signed up for our parent portal, you are able to log into the parent portal and you will see, I call these our Hollywood squares. You will see one square that says Naviance. And if you click on this, it will take you right into your actual student's account. And you will be able to see some of the things that your student is doing and some of the things that they have housed in their actual career portfolio. So again, this is accessible to you if you have signed up for the parent and guardian uh, student portal to access uh, things in your student's account. So I'm gonna stop there. I will pause um, for folks to be able to drop any questions in the chat uh, specific to the tasks and activities we are doing with students in the classroom before I turn it over to Nicole to go in and show us an actual demo. So um, I do see Amelia, I actually, um, so if you're in your parent portal and I, I just wanna ask because I had this question um, earlier, I was doing this with a, a fellow a staff member of mine that has students that are in schools in the district. When you go into the parent portal, there's two sections where you will actually see uh, the Naviance Square one is in like your student section, but if you scroll down further, there's the actual parent section. And then there's gonna be another square. See if you're able to see those, both of those squares. And if you're able to click on the one towards the, got it. Yeah. I just found this out the other day. Um, so I just wanted to make sure um, you're able to see it in the right area. Cause that is actually really confusing. Um, one is for the student and one is the parent. Um, see if there's any other questions in the chat. I do see I have some private chats and I will go in and answer those questions for you as uh, Nicole gets started. All right, if we don't have any other public um, chats, Nicole, I'll turn it over to you and just let me know, do you want me to keep uh, this screen up or are you gonna go into the... Platform. I'm going to go into Navient Student and navigate around. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And I just want to highlight the question. I don't know. Outside agencies getting access to Naviance? Um, So as far as outside agencies, the only um, folks that we're able to have access right now, um, you must be a school district of Philadelphia employee and or a parent or guardian. Um, if outside agencies are working within the schools, they could work with someone in the school building, um, i.e. a counselor or a teacher to be able to, to see student accounts. Um, but for our students' uh, data privacy, we are not able to grant outside agencies their own accounts. All right. So I'll go ahead and get started here and share my screen. Um, just to let you all know, this is a demo student account that I actually created um, just for this session. I did create it in one of the district school site accounts for Navient. So um, I want to give you the real feel of you know, what it would look like and also use the actual uh, task that the district is using instead of as a sample ninth grader. So but I do want to just clarify this is completely fictional student, I set up some activities that I did to give you some uh, demonstrations here. So again, uh, I'm Nicole Becker from PowerSchool. Uh, my job is a Navient um, professional services consultant. So I work closely with Kathy and um, others in your district to make sure that Navient is working uh, as expected and providing all of the great resources that Kathy mentioned um, in her presentation. So thank you. Kathy, for kind of setting the stage for what I'm going to review here. Um, so really my role in the presentation is to just kind of show you the technical piece, which is an overview of the platform um, and the kind of tools that students have access to, as well as what you as uh, parents, guardians um, can see in the system. 
So to get started, when you open up Navigate Student um, from your parent portal in the Philadelphia School District account, you are going to have a very similar view to what students see and do. I'm actually showing you student view here today. But one thing I do want to highlight to you all is that as uh, parents guardians logging in, you will have view access to what the students are working on in Navigant Students. So we say that students do and parents view in Navigant Student. Um, so I just don't want you to be surprised if you go to look at an assessment and there's not like a hyperlink for you to reset an assessment or take an assessment when, um, you know, if you're looking at the student's perspective, they'll have slightly different functionality than you. Um, so we can go ahead and get started. I just really wanted to call out a couple of key items here, uh, particularly for the benefit of having this recorded. Um, so on that last screen that uh, Kathy showed, I just called out two uh, tools here that I think are really important um, that are kind of above and beyond the, you know, day-to-day -day work that students are doing. So first is the uh, in-product translation for Navient student. This is available only for the student platform and parent and guardian platform as well, but not the like administrator portal that staff use in the district. So there is a globe icon here in the top right hand corner. When you open it up, it will automatically translate the screen um, to whichever language is selected. And there are currently over 70 languages available. It will save uh, frequently used languages. So it's really easy. For example, if I chose Spanish, then the next time I go to translate it, I won't have to scroll down to Spanish. It will just be available here. So it translates everything except for the Strengths Explorer. Um, and that is one tool that I did want to call out. The other tool is in the bottom right hand corner. This is the show me how feature. So as you are getting to know a Navient student or if um, the students you're working with are maybe having some trouble navigating or just, you know, one of the tools they're using is new to them. The show me how resource does uh, provide on screen tutorials for every tool in Navient student. When you open up to the show me how icon, it will give you a menu that roughly aligns with all of the tabs that you see across the top of the screen. So we have self discovery careers, colleges, uh, planner, and then there's an about me section that's behind this menu. So you can say, okay, how do I uh, work in the colleges tab to maybe research colleges? And then we can look at, you know, college profiles or how to favorite colleges, for example. And when you open that up, you'll get an on-screen tutorial for whatever uh, tool you are looking to learn more about. Um, so I did want to share that with you, especially if you're newer to the platform. This is a great way to learn uh, the basic navigation and how to actually utilize the tools. So just kind of following along with what Kathy had um, mentioned in her presentation to make sure that I'm covering everything, I did want to review the student actions in Navient Student. When they log into Navient Student um, on their homepage, just under this welcome message, if you scroll down, um, you would see a list of important to do's and tasks. These are, for the most part, assigned from the district. So if you see anything that's like grade level with a task next to it, this is a part of the scope and sequence that Kathy mentioned. And there are tasks set up for every single grade level um, from grades 3 through 11 currently, which is you know the requirement uh, from the, the Pennsylvania Department of Education. I also just made an example of how students, in addition to the tasks that schools assign to the district assigns to them, um, the students can make their own to-do list as well within Navient students. They can really track everything that they need to do in one single location. So that's just an example of a student-driven task. Um, to work on the task, the students essentially click on the task to learn more about it. Um, as Kathy showed, within the classroom, there are very structured lesson plans and additional resources that will supplement this activity. Uh, but for the students to actually complete that task and log in every student that they did it, create the artifact, which is what's required for uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Within the task, there's always going to be a pink diamond and it's going to tell them exactly what they need to do. So a lot of the work that they're doing in Navient is, like Kathy was saying, reflections. Um, so for example, they would be clicking to take this survey and then they would have a reflection survey about the activity uh, that they just completed in their classroom. The Navient logs that reflection as well as marking that, that task as complete, which then um, helps the district to report on how they are meeting the requirement set forth by uh, the PDE. In addition, every survey has the uh, standard aligned to it as well. So it's really easy to see uh, what standard this task is meeting. Okay. Now, the nice thing is, so we can see like if they complete a survey, this is kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but as they're completing surveys, um, Kathy mentioned that it, it will maintain all the work that they did. So 
they'd be able to see any surveys they completed uh, this year as well as prior years within the platform. All right, so going back to my homepage, the icon here always gets you back to the homepage. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of the other tools that uh, she mentioned that are part of the scope and sequence. So within Navience, there is a self-discovery section. Um, there are up to eight different assessments that can be um, administered. The assessments are turned on by grade level. So perhaps if a student has not reached a grade level where they're you know, supposed to be working on that assessment, they wouldn't necessarily see everything here uh, listed in the menu. And there are some assessments that are not being used by the district at all. So um, it just depends on what is you know, part of the scope and sequence and built into the curriculum. Um, so they can click into any of the assessments to learn more about it and then take it, whether it is you know, on their own or as part of a lesson. Um, to access all the assessments or really any of the tools within the system all in one spot, whenever you open up a tab, there's always going to be a home screen. So if I open up Self-Discovery Home, um, I can see all the different assessments that are available to the student in a given grade. It reviews a little bit about what the assessment is measuring, and then if the student has not taken the assessment, they can start it. If the student has taken the assessment, like I did this morning, um, you will see the most recent date that they completed the assessment, as well as just a high level overview of their results. Um, again, on the parent guardian portal, you would not be able to click into any of the retake or the start. You would just kind of see them there as um, just like text, not with the actual hyperlinks. Um, you can click into view results here. The student can do the same thing to see a list of all of the um, results. So here they would get their Holland personality type. And the nice thing is for any of the results, they're not just getting like the actual scores, but they're also getting more information about what it means as well as how it relates to careers. So if I wanted to learn more about careers that relate to the conventional personality type, I could click view careers uh, to learn more. And I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, further down the screen, it really digs into, you know, what do each of these personality types mean um, and how do they relate to work environments, which is a part of Holland's overall career theory. So they can learn more about, you know, how personality and career um, should match up, hopefully to help you find a job satisfaction. And just like above, they can click on view careers here to learn more. Um, finally, at the bottom of most of the assessments, there are going to be some career recommendations um, just to kind of get them started. You'll see these career content cards with the uh, career title, a little bit about it, education, and median salary. Um, these were, you know, high priority items that students listed as things they want to know about a career before they click into the career to learn more. And they can easily favorite careers and colleges within the system. Um, even scholarships by clicking on the heart icon, and then it saves them to a list of favorites. Um, to get to the favorites, you can access that from the homepage or at the top of the screen. There's a heart icon where you can actually see all the students' favorites. All right, um, so just to look at a career, and then I'll, I'll pause for a moment before I move on to the next um, section here. Let's say I wanted to learn more about library technicians, right? This really like piqued my interest. Um, I can click into the job title here, and then they will learn more about the career. All of the career information is sourced from the uh, US Department of Labor and ONET. Um, so this is all coming right out of the um, you know, US government's occupational database and being imported into Navians in a way that is easy to digest um, and really broken up by different sections here. So they'll get the information that was on that content card. They'll see how it's related to one of the 16 national career clusters or um, 79 career pathways. Again, they can see a little bit more about the day-to-day -day of that job, get an idea of what that job um, makes in terms of an annual salary across the US. So here we can see like in Pennsylvania, the career makes around $33,000. However, if we go to uh, Minnesota, the salary increases to 44,000 or California closer to 46. Um, and they can get a further breakdown by state. They'll see more information about that Holland Code, which is uh, gonna be available in every career profile as well as related majors and related careers. So one of the cool things I just wanted to share with you, and again, this is gonna be on that recording. So you're welcome to go back and kind of look at this a little bit more slowly uh, in smaller chunks to digest. But within a career um, profile, they can even see related majors. And what I love about this is the career majors, if I click on it, I did open a new, new tab to kind of save my spot there. But when they open that, they're actually gonna be led to an advanced college search where they can see different colleges that have that exact major that's related to that um, occupation. And then they can further um, 
narrow their search by a number of criteria that are part of your typical college or university search. Plus, they can save that search when they, once they complete it. So you can really start to understand how students are you know, beginning to explore information about careers as early as third grade in the state of Pennsylvania. And then eventually that information is leading them into potential career um, profiles, right, that could be a fit for them. And then further exploring, like, okay, now that I've really discovered some careers that are of interest to me, is there any post-secondary preparation that's required? And if so, what is that preparation? And where can I go to study to prepare for this career? So it really gives them that kind of um, big picture of career preparedness uh, based on, you know, their own unique values, interests, uh, and personality types. I'm going to go back to that career profile just to show you a couple of other highlights here. And I definitely encourage you to either log into your portal or to, um, you know, have your students show you what they've been working on so you can, you know, dig into this a little bit more. There's a list of skills and experiences. So this actually you can open as a accordion menu of knowledge, skills, abilities, activities, and tasks that are required for different careers. Um, I talked about that wages tab. So here again, we have that heat map of wages across the United States but they can further break it down by state. So how does uh, the national low, median, high salary compare to the state of Pennsylvania? And then, you know, perhaps as a student, hourly wages maybe make a little bit more sense to me because, you know, I've never seen or been offered an annual salary perhaps as a, you know, 12, 13, 14 year old, but maybe, you know, my grandmother sends me $20 in a card for my birthday, right? And that makes more sense to me. Or maybe I have a part-time hourly wage job so they can toggle and it will change over to hourly and they can really break that down maybe into a number that's a little bit more relatable uh, to what they, they kind of already are familiar with. Furthermore, they can break down wages by city, either by salary or hourly. So we can look at Philadelphia and say, okay, in Philadelphia, this is the wages for this job. And then I can even break it down to the Philadelphia kind of greater uh, metro area um, or even some of the suburbs here to see, you know, what that, that career may bring in in terms of an hourly salary. And then they may say, well, I don't want to live in Pennsylvania. Maybe I want to live somewhere else and they can actually break it down by state as well. Um, so that's just an overview of the career research tools and assessments. I just wanted to pause for a moment here. I see some questions from the chat. I think Kathy or uh, some other folks are in here kind of moderating, um, but I wanted to pause and see if you had any questions. So I just wanted to say, um, and I know I wrote it in the chat, that all of our tasks are assigned from the district level um, as far as the assessments. Assessments are assigned at different times during the year um, and in different grades. Uh, so what I would suggest is if you go to the self-discovery uh, section in your student's account, you will see any of the assessments that they already um, have taken. Um, I know we use uh, Strengths Explorer as an example that's typically assigned in ninth grade. So if you go in and you don't see that the student has taken Strengths Explorer, that means that they didn't complete that task. They can always go in and complete it now. Um, and then, uh, as I said, as, as students go along um, in different grades, we will assign different assessments. Right. And then just to kind of highlight uh, for the assessments, whenever the students click start, they can learn more about the assessment. Um, sometimes it says how long it will take, but at least they're going to know what to expect before they take it. So they're not just going in with, you know, without knowing kind of the, the time commitment or what it's measuring. So that's really helpful as well. All right. So if there aren't any questions about what we just reviewed, um, I do want to call out one other tool in the career section. So um, the, there are search tools here where students can look at careers, you know, maybe not necessarily from a, you know, career assessment, but they can go in and just explore careers, pathways, and clusters. Um, so those are both search tools that are available. Um, there are also these Road Nation videos that I wanted to highlight. So um, essentially, back in the early 2000s, some young people graduated from college and weren't really sure of their, you know, future career. So they, they took some time. They somehow purchased an RV, and they went across the country and interviewed leaders in a lot of different fields. So some of the fields that are represented are, um, you know, airline employees like pilots and uh, flight attendants. Um, there is a chemist from Jelly Belly. There are um, bands represented, such as, um, I know there's one of the band members from the band Roots. 
Um, there are, you know, entrepreneurs, there are writers and artists. I mean, just a really broad array of uh, careers represented. So they went on over 50 road trips. There are actually over a thousand leaders um, in, in the video archive here and over 10,000 videos. So they cannot be broken down only by like careers, but also by um, different themes. So for students begin to explore the, the library or even for yourself to look at this, they can do the find your road quiz where they can define like a foundation and two interest areas to find um, maybe a leader who has a similar road. And then they'll get a list of all these leaders. They'll learn a little bit more about them. And then they can just click into the leader's um, bio here to learn more about them. They get a bio and then some, you know, shorter videos um, for, about that person. And this is their overall interview. So it's really interesting. And what I think is really cool about Road Trip Nation is that it kind of bridges that um, journey from, you know, okay, so I have a degree or I studied or I, or I did this technical education, I have the certificate and I want to get this, you know, kind of dream job that aligns with my passion and how do I turn that into my livelihood? And I think Road Trip Nation really answers that question, right? So the leaders here, they talk about their journey. It's not, you know, what is a day in the office, but more so how did you turn your passion to, to your livelihood? What were the steps? What, were, what was your journey? And they really speak to that and kind of, you know, like I said, they're, they're that bridge. And they'll show that it's not always like a straight path to get to, you know, exactly what you want to do and, and meet your goal. But sometimes, you know, there's different uh, kind of twists and turns along the way. These videos are also broken down by interest areas, um, as well as various themes here. And then, <coughs> excuse me, they can even look by different um, leaders as well. There are a couple of playlists at the end that are curated by um, by the Road Trip Nation uh, team. So one is um, related directly to STEM careers. There are other curated um, items around new challenges, being a first generation to go to college, surviving the tough neighborhood, and leaving home for the first time. So you know, all just really relevant to young people, and I think overall like very relatable especially since the interviewers are not, you know, adults or parents or guardians, right? They're also young people. So um, I think that perspective just really helps them be more engaging. Um, so that's another career research tool that I wanted to highlight before I just transition over to showing you um, the college and career research tool, the career college research tools, um, but just taking in a moment to see if you have any um, other, any questions about the career tools. Yeah, so there was a question about skills, um, like soft skills, and I think that's really something that Road Trip Nation addresses, you know, quite nicely, um, because again, it's not just like, what do you do every day in the office, but how did you actually, you know, get to this career, and what's important, right, what are the things that really matter, and that's where the leaders really speak to that. Um, I will also say as part of the PDE requirements, um, I believe it's, well, there's 13.2 and 13.3. One of them is uh, career, there's career advancement and retention, for example, and that those standards really get into those soft skills. So those are addressed within the scope and sequence. And just um, again, um, we we roll out these tasks by quarter um, and we do touch on things like interviewing skills um, and those kind of career advancement and retention, retention pieces. For our students, in addition, there is also a full curriculum in uh, Navience, which we we do use some of the um, lessons that are in that curriculum, but students are able to complete any of those lessons at any time, and a lot of those touch on those soft skills as well. Yeah, that's a really good point, Kathy. So right from the homepage, there was this purple box, uh, if you're kind of watching me as, I, as she was talking. But for example, there's um, a lesson here on teamwork or setting goals. Um, there are lessons, let's see here, even about, you know, applying uh, to college or, you know, making a plan for high school, right? So just kind of thinking ahead. So those are, that's a really good call out, Kathy, that, that the curriculum really does address that as well. Um, the one comment um, was about, you know, not sure if you're, you're children wanted to go to college. And I just wanted to call out in the career section under Explore Careers, there is a career filter. So this is, uh, I think, really neat. They added this within the last like 
year and a half or so. But under the education tab, students can say like, okay, I just want to look for careers that maybe don't require me to, you know, get a college degree. Like, what can I do with maybe a high school certification, high school diploma? And they can really start to filter, um, you know, by their post-secondary goals, but even by other areas as well, right? So like, what is my desired salary when I graduate? Or what are the clusters that I'm interested in, right? That really like pique my interest where I think I would be happy, you know, working. So um, they can filter jobs. There are over a thousand different career profiles in the system. And this um, filter really helps students to focus in out of those thousand on careers that, you know, maybe make sense for them or could be a potentially good fit. And again, they have that content card and they can easily favorite. All right, thanks for asking that. Um, there's a question about having access after 12th grade, Kathy. Yeah, so our students will have access to this. Um, we are single sign-on. So as, as, as long as they have access to the actual student portal, which I believe is only two years after they graduate, they would have access um, to their actual account. Um, Nicole, I know there's some other ways that students can gain access, um, but for us with having um, single sign-on, it kind of limits the amount of time they have access to it. All right, and then what actually, and also to that point, if the students wanted to make sure that they could within that two-year window kind of take everything they did in Navius along with them, under the About Me tab, there is a portfolio that they can uh, take and actually print out of all of their work. So they would have, you know, a list of resumes, any tasks they completed, any goals that they set. They would have, you know, careers, colleges saved and all of that. And it's just automatically generated, which they can print. So, you know, once those two years are up, it's not like they have to lose all the information. It's really easy to just quickly uh, pull that from the system. You all are asking great questions and I absolutely love that. So thank you. Okay, let's talk a little bit about a couple other tools. I know we're already at 1042. Um, there's a lot of great resources here, so I'm glad that we're able to show you know a lot of them today. Um, one of the questions was about college research. So um, under the colleges tab, there are a lot of different um, college search tools. Our favorite one is Supermatch because it is unique to uh, Navient Student. So this one does provide an on-screen tutorial where it walks students through you know the different steps. So finding your fit criteria. Um, choosing the must have versus nice to have, and then understanding what information you want to see in your results and um, pinning your favorite schools, comparing them, as well as searching for specific schools to add to the list. So just to kind of give you a quick, quick demo of this, if I pick, um, let's see, I'll just pick Pennsylvania and I will pick, um, let's see here, a large city, see what we can find as far as Philadelphia schools. And already we have a list of schools, see a lot of schools in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh are showing up. So from here, students can pin schools to compare them side by side. They can add them to a favorites list. They can see why a certain school is or is not um, on their favorites list. They have an idea of how it matches their academics, which as a demo student, I don't have anything uh, in the system, but I believe they would see their GPA. And then they can choose within this um, table here, what exactly is important to them, right? So I'm interested in admissions costs, admissions costs, and then maybe also athletics. And I can toggle my chart to see other um, items as well. So they're getting just a list of criteria that really matter personally to them and what they care about the most when they are looking at college universities. Um, as they pin the information, they can export it to, well, they can view all the pinned colleges side by side. Um, and they can also export that list out to an Excel file. Maybe they wanted to share it with you or with their counselor or just save it for themselves to do some more like in-depth research. It's really easy to pull that um, information from a super match. And then just to kind of demo a college profile. So whether they are pulling the college demo uh, or the college profile from a super match or maybe searching it on it from their home screen, whenever there's a college profile linked in Navient Student, they're going to get a consistent search experience. So um, think about, you know, looking at different college websites or different company websites, right? You could have a company, several companies that offer the same service, but everybody's going to have a different website. And then you have to kind of figure out how to navigate it. What I love about the profiles is that they're very, it's a very standardized experience. So no matter what profile the students are looking at, they're going to know where to find all this information. Um, this information is sourced directly from the colleges and universities themselves through a, um, a database called iPeds. And Navians does import that data from that database periodically 
You can see this information was just updated in the current year. So you get an overview of highlights. Um, I used to work for a university. So this is what I kind of call the fast facts, right? The items we would put on our one pager, um, but things like net price, grad rate, they can toggle between four and six. Um, acceptance rate, which gives an idea of competitiveness. If there's colleges that, you know, kind of overlap with the school and then their next deadline, they'll get some general facts about the school. And then from within uh, your student's school, if the uh, high school has, you know, GPA or SAT and ACT score, they'd see the school's middle 50%. If the college reports it, they see the college's middle 50%, and then they can toggle, you know, between different sections of the assessments, um, just to get an idea of, you know, how their scores maybe compare uh, to other students who have been accepted to that college. Now, I know with COVID, a lot of schools that had traditionally been, um, you know, test required have gone test optional. So maybe the test wouldn't be such a strong consideration uh, for your students as much as maybe they were in 2019 or before. They'll get a list about the of studies, right? So what are the majors that are available? What are some academic fast facts? And they can toggle amongst the different degree types. Um, look at student life information um, here on the screen as well and then break down the whole admissions process. Um, there's also a screen dedicated to cost. Um, and I know I'm kind of flipping through this quickly, but I just want to give you an idea of what content's here because we don't have the time to do like a really deep dive on any of these topics, uh, but definitely feel free to kind of work back through this presentation um, when it is out on the web uh, in this recorded form. They can, again, use that heart icon to add any colleges to their favorites list. And then this would you know, be something they could build over time when they get to be a senior, if they do decide to go to college, they could easily select all those um, colleges from their perspective list and quickly move them over to their application list. Um, in some cases, schools have opted in to have Navient's connect with Common Application. So all their Common App schools get shared back to Navient student. And then it's a one-stop shop for students to share the college list with counselors and for counselors and teachers to manage um, the document uploads and transmissions. Nicole, quick question. Yeah. I know um, that Common App matches to uh, Navient, but when they're searching the schools, are you able to see if it's a Common App school in the search or no? Like, are you able to? Um, oh, that's a great point, Kathy. Yes. Yeah. So um, Common Application just this past fall has officially uh, reached over 1,000 member institutions. And if a student would like to look at all of the member institutions of the common application, there is a search um, that they can use. It's, I don't think it's embedded in the super, oh yeah, actually it is, sorry. Um, so for super match college search, if we want to look at all of the common app schools, I believe. Yeah, so there's a section called groups. Mm, okay, that has to be a, a group here. Let me just check one other place. Okay, yeah, so under the admissions section, they can select Common App member. So that's one place they can look to see if the school is a part of the Common Application. Um, the other place they can look just to see a list of all the Common App schools without having to run a super match is in the Colleges tab under the uh, College Lookup. There are several um, college groups here, and there are some groups built in, but schools can also add in their own quick list or copy other groups. So you say, like, okay, I want to look at all the Common App schools and click go. And then here's a list of all the Common App member institutions. Or they can say, like, we, there's the HBCU institutions, for example. Um, it also, every state will also include Hispanic serving, Ivy League, um, U.S. Catholic College, and I think Jesuit College, but I'm not sure. Uh, the PC universities and the SDP quick list are groups that the school has um, opted to copy into their, their group. So this may not be uh, in all the school sites, depending on what groups this, the high school has added. And a lot of the configuration that you're seeing here is um, specific to the high school, so they can kind of change and adjust it as you know best suits the needs of their, their student population. All right, I love that your questions are coming, coming in here about uh, the colleges. Let me see if there's any... Any other uh, questions here? Do you have any other questions related to college research? Fantastic, okay. Um, a couple of other just highlights here of tools in the system to share with you all. Um, in the planner tab, students can go to the planner home to see a list of all of the tasks that have been assigned to them. So right now, 
because I added these for myself this morning, my two tasks are overdue, but I can also see all the tasks that I had already completed. So if you're curious about that historical record that Kathy had mentioned earlier, um, you'd be able to see all the tasks that your students have ever completed as part of their uh, PA339 requirements. Um, they can also set goals in the system. So for ninth grade, a goal is a requirement for one of the tasks. I went in just like meet a goal here, um, but essentially they would add a goal and then they get a SMART goal template where they can really write out all the important steps for them to reach their goal. Um, something else is kind of neat about this. So I had set a sample goal already and submitted it, just made like a SMART goal. They can actually come back here and mark when it's done, when they've accomplished the goal to check off that, yeah, I, I did that. And that's, you know, for some students, they might find that to be really satisfying that I can, you know, have my checklist, um, or they can even define some micro steps that they would take to complete that goal. They can manage their own to-do list. So I did mention that. I added in just like, hey, I need to sign up for the soccer team. Um, so right now my son is getting messages. Uh, I'm getting his messages about signing up for spring sports. So I thought that would be timely. Um, so I added that as a to-do list and I can also go in and mark that as done. They can manage their own to-do items here in the system. All right, a um, couple of other tools just to highlight before we break uh, for the day. In the About Me tab, um, Oh, and Kathy, I just want to call. There's a question that's coming in directly to me, but um, Carol is asking how long SDP has been using Navians. Uh, if you want to just answer that, like in the chat or off, whatever you want to do. Um, so in the About Me tab, students have a resume builder. So I just kind of cataloged a couple of experiences here. Students can continue to build on these experiences. Uh, this is available from, I think, elementary on, but don't quote me on that. Definitely from sixth grade on. And there is a list of different um, resume topics that they can add to the to their resume. They can add as many experiences as they have, or maybe they can edit uh, as needed from year to year. But this is great, you know, just to have this like repository. So that way, when they are juniors and seniors and having to create those resumes for scholarships, college applications, jobs, et cetera, they're not frantically trying to remember all their experiences. They can simply go back to Navians and see everything they've recorded. Plus, they can then take that information and they can export it into a printable resume. So when I download a PDF, now this is not going to be, uh, it's not going to have the demographic data up here because I'm not a real student, but look at how nicely it just catalogs everything for them so they don't have to mess around with formatting in like a Google Doc or in a Word document. So it will automatically generate the resume based on the experiences that the student has recorded. Um, so that is the About Me Resume Builder. And then the uh, final two items I wanted to share were just the journal tool. So students can, um, in the About Me tab, record journals. So here I made like just a quick reflection, like maybe they want to catalog, you know, a job shadow experience or um, a summer camp or something like that. They want to just remember and jot down notes. They can add uh, journals here related to any topics. They can add documents to attach to that journal and then choose who they share that journal item with. If they select <clears throat> to share it with my parents, when you log into the platform, you would be able to see any journal entries that have that my parents um, selected here when they add that journal entry. And then finally, I do want to share with you the survey tool. I know we, we had looked at that. Actually, I think we already looked at that. But basically, you can go in and see all the surveys that they ever completed, um, not just from within the task, but from within the surveys from their school. So we kind of got a peek at this earlier, but I do want to share there's a direct way to get to that. And then you can go into a survey with a check mark and see how the student had answered um, any of those questions that were a part of their assigned tasks. So we did cover a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I wanted to provide the highlights of the navigation, um, especially from the parent view. I promise you, you cannot break Navient students. So if you do have some time, definitely access it, go in, click all of the links, uh, view all the work your student has done, you know, ask your student about the work that they do in Navient Student, what they find to be most helpful, or maybe share with them some of the resources that you found to be um, helpful here. But again, I promise that you you can't break it because it's all view only. So yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for letting me join this presentation and provide that overview. Nicole, the the parents won't see a demo student, will they? No, they will okay. see exactly what their students see. Yes, you. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, this was super, super helpful. We enjoyed all of your questions. Um, as you all can see, the platform is super, super comprehensive, and it's 
really a helpful uh, tool for students. Um, one thing we've just been working on is just getting students to take advantage of it and use it um, more and to explore more just so they can learn more about themselves and careers and, and the potential they have after they graduate. So thank you all for attending today. We appreciate you. And the last thing I wanted to do is drop my email in the chat um, again, um, I'm Kathy White and I oversee our, the platform for the district and I work hand in hand with uh, Nicole from Power School. Uh, so if you all have questions or concerns um, after this presentation, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Thank you so much, Kathy, and thank you, Nicole, for that wonderful presentation. Lots of information there, um, lots of great questions. That was a really great presentation. Thank you, both of you. I'll put this in chat. Again, everyone, thank you for attending our workshop today. We do have our evaluation form that is in chat right now is that tiny URL. Uh, if you could just click that and give us a uh, a review, there's a couple of questions there and you'll be entered into a raffle to win a gift card for your participation. So take a chance, you know, maybe you'll win. Um, and so the link is in chat right there. And thank you everyone for attending today. If you have any follow-up questions, again, Kathy's email is in chat. And then also we have fact at villasd.org, which you see on screen. If you have any questions for specifically for Kathy or Nicole, I can always pass them over and we will make sure your questions are answered. So thank you so much everyone for attending.